live shopping is not the one off. It's a strategy. It's a marketing channel. Something that could bring uh, your brand many different values. Ari, welcome to the show. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Oh, like it's uh, this year. It's intense. It's a good busy. You know, I don't know. I will. I will. Uh, I will. I think get more information during the episode. That also how things are going on your side. That we like streaming, social commerce. You know, it's it's getting bigger and bigger. So uh, it's busy, uh, but busy is good. At least you know what what they say here. You know. Yes, busy. It's definitely good. Um. So. You know, before we get into the, you know, the different topics of the day that is going to be, you know, live commerce, you know, and influencer marketing, the creator economy and so on, commerce and so on. I would like to know a bit more about yourself, right? Uh, um, could be the company level, could be you personally. And we use something called an app that is basically the mission. So what do you aim to achieve with what you do, right? The achievements, anything that you're really proud of could be personally or, you know, career wise. The other one is the purpose. So like why you do what you do. Yeah, so first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, I think that uh, building Byways is something that I'm super proud of. Uh, building this company that is uh, pioneering in the live shopping space and connecting um, live shopping retailers and brands with influencers and creators. Uh, personally, myself as an entrepreneur, I think that um, the female angle of our company is very important. Uh, since personally, uh, I am obviously a, a female entrepreneur that raised money from VC. They have uh, also female investors that support uh, the company. Uh, we have more than 50% of the employees of the company as well. Do you know, break this um, glass ceiling of uh, women in business, women in VC and fundraising. So I'm very proud of it. Amazing, you know, and that, and I understand well, like, you know, we, my co-founder is like, you know, female, 70% plus female in the company, even if you have typical white male, you know, a CEO here, but I'm really proud also of that. I think it's very important. So thank you for that. Achievements. So I think that the, for us, uh, we started the, the small company from uh, Tel Aviv, and now we are working with some of the biggest brands and retailers in the world. As some I can't mention, but uh, the fact is we are working with a lot of, you know, these huge, huge companies worldwide. I think it's a huge achievement for us because I remember that when I started this journey, it was, oh, but how can I get to these huge brands to work with us? And, and then it happened. It happened and a lot of them even came to us. And uh, with some of them, we're working now for years. And and I know that you already said that, uh, you know, in the mission, right? So what do you aim to achieve? But is there anything else on the purpose side? So why, why you do what you do? So Yes, I think that uh, our uh, purpose was to change the way people shop online. Felt that when I shop online, the experience is a bit, you know, boring, very individual, and you don't have, you know, something exciting about it. You just browse, open tabs of different products. And I thought that we need to do it more fun. I thought that we need to to connect people to each other while they shop online. And then during the journey, obviously the product and everything that we built, it developed to be something much bigger than what we planned uh, from the beginning, but still we 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 share this vision to to change the way people shop online. And talking about you know having fun, right? Uh, so there is a more gamification these days uh, on the internet. Uh, there is like this way of entertaining while you know selling something. So let's look into that. Um, how do you see? Like, can you provide any either insights or tips and tricks, right, for influencers out there that want to maximize their Live shopping game, right? Because what I say with David is that an influencer could be amazing in creating maybe a 30 second TikTok video. Doesn't mean that they are might be good in entertaining for one hour, right? To someone while selling, entertaining, and making fun of things, informing people. Have you noticed something? Is there anything uh, you know like the you notice that you know maybe can help people listening today? Yeah, and um, I think that uh, when we watch our sessions and we see. A lot of sessions that um, contain some explanations about how to use the product, uh, how to, um, you know, uh, let's say if it's a beauty session, so how to put the makeup exactly, so to give some uh, valuable information and really 
you know, good tips during the live event. It's something that make people uh, engage with the session and also increase conversion rates. And then I would say that, um, you know, we at Bywoods, we have a very unique experience um, of co-browsing during the live event. So we also have a patent about this uh, experience that the host, let's say the influencer, can actually browse the site from product to product and give recommendations on top of the website. So one thing uh, we noticed was that it's very important to also have the products, some of the products with you and show them on the video and demonstrate how to use them. And another thing that we saw is that asking the, the audience questions and, you know, encourage them to be out of the live event is also something that uh, could help. For instance, uh, some of the creators are asking, where are you from? I think the audience, where are you from? And then people are writing in chat, I'm from here, I'm from there. So to to engage with the audience, not just be busy with your items that you want to present, but really feel the audience. Because uh, in some cases, we saw that the um, since there are many comments in the chat and the creator could be busy with, you know, pres only presenting the item, they're losing the connection with the audience. So I would say that, you know, remember that people are here with you and, you know, keep them with you in the live event. So basically this helps uh, also for the rotation, I guess, right? So because it's not just for that session, because you want to keep the attention for that session, but also you want to add them maybe joining another session, right? Another session. So is there anything else that you can think of, not only, again, to uh, maximize the specific one, but to tell the people, hey, I'll see you again next week at this hour, or why people should join again? Is there any tips in that as well? Yeah, so a lot of times we're doing it, different themes every, every live event. We have creators that are doing their like weekly show on our, on our, on our platform, so it is something common that um, every time they come again and they promote this weekly show on their um, Instagram, let's say, or on other platforms, and then people can save their spot. So we have an automatic uh, registration process for the live event. It's like a webinar registration process that you could sign up to the live event and then you could notify to the same session uh, with the same creator after by another text message once it happens. So we also have this uh, service. And, you know, a live shopping, live streaming, it means that it's happening at a specific time during a specific day. If you are not present, you're gonna, you know, lose the, you know, like the, 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 the trust to see like maybe a big discount or drop collection, whatever. So. You know, it creates fall more right? You want to be there maybe all in the specific time and so on. But on the other end, uh, I see sometimes some creators that are taking some of the, maybe they're making clips out of the one hour, let's say, and, you know, maybe to show a specific product and so on. Uh, do, do you recommend doing that? Do you recommend clipping out of things for others to watch? Or do you prefer to be like, you know what, uh, if you're not there and watching that moment, uh, it's on you next time you should uh, uh, you know, just like, you know, show up because again, because of the maybe incentive to be there in that moment. Yeah. So we believe in the short clips and the short form videos that can come after the, the, the live session ends. So we actually have an automatic system that take every live event and cut it into short form of product snippets. So you have video per product that was shown during the live event and you could promote it on social media even on the product page of the website and on many other locations. And the idea is still that when you got, come to the live event, you could ask questions, you could engage with the influencer, you have the live event experience that you won't have by watching a, you know, the record, short recording of the video. So there is still a lot of value to come to the live event itself. But then this a machine that is uh, creating content automatically and at scale from every live event can really help creators to to have more content to promote a product to their audience say uh, after the session ends as well and it helps also brands and retailers to to have this content that could keep monetized while after the session ends hello is your brand ready to amplify its reach well, the Influencer Marketing Factory is here to do just that. 
We are a global influencer marketing agency helping brands ignite their growth from influencer identification to campaign strategy, handling legalities and agreements to managing shipping and logistics. We have it all covered. We work with hundreds of brands across different verticals from Fortune 500 companies to DTC brands. And we don't just stop there. With detailed ROI analysis, we help brands like yours measure success, transforming impressions into actionable conversions. You can find us at the influencermarketingfactory.com or just search the Influencer Marketing Factory on Google. You know, since you're now mentioning brands and retails, uh, um, do you have any example that you can share with us about something that was successful uh, in terms of like live streaming, right? Uh, I don't know if you, if you, what you can mention, if you can mention that, uh, if you cannot measure, I just like, would like to have an idea of what was the, you know, the concept behind that and why it was more successful compared maybe to other live stream shopping events uh, uh, that didn't break them and out the, you know, eyeballs or conversion. Yes. So we have many use cases and many of them, I can't mention the brands or the retailer uh, itself, but um, we saw some um, different use cases. So one use case could be an influencer that is promoting the session to her audience. In addition to have the brand, in this case, it was a big fashion brand, promoting the session on newsletter. And then we have, we had tens of thousands of sales in each live, in this live event. Now we really um, believe in the combination of taking an influencer that is promoting the session on her social media account, but also have the brand promoting the session on their tools. Another example is um, a, a big luxury brand that we are working uh, with um, currently. And they actually sent SMS, like text message to tens of thousands of people right before the live started. So without promoting even the live event before, just once the live started, they sent this SMS. So this also uh, brought a lot of audience to the session and also a lot of sales. And another use case that we see um, is that some of the brands are doing the sessions with their own employees. So they even don't use a uh, influencer for this uh, use case. They actually use their own uh, brands experts to do the live session on top of the website. In terms of industries also, uh, I mean, of course, you know, fashion, beauty, I guess they, they go well. I saw sometimes other like, you know, website, they also do collectibles, uh, very niche specific. Uh, are there any other like um, industries that might not be that uh, expected, I would say, that works well on yeah, so live shopping really started with fashion and beauty as, you know, the obvious categories for it. But um, recently we see other categories that are starting to grow. So, for instance, uh, kitchen equipment and home decor uh, works re really well and uh, electronics as well and babies products, children's products as well. Um, so, um, there are many different categories. We also had some sessions with like gamers for gadgets and everything. And so this also could work. DIY is perfect. So people are really coming to hear and get some tips from uh, DIY uh, creators. And so this is also a good category. So do they like, for instance, I'm thinking about like, you know, I love cooking. So I imagine that maybe a creator in, 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 is not just selling, you know, Hey, this is the pen that you should buy. This is the other device and tool, whatever. But maybe they, they might, I, I don't know, I guess like they might do like a recipe, like, right. And then while they do that, uh, the gamer could like play in the game and in the meantime, talking about the product. Right. So, uh, I don't see more and more on that uh, compared to the, just the typical, like, Hey, one item, buy this thing, this is the other color. I guess it's, that is the entertaining part, right? Exactly, yeah. So if it's a cooking session, so they would, uh, for instance, we had a partnership with the Tupperware, for instance. Yeah. They cooked during the live event itself. And um, and it was very, you know, cool to see you see someone cooking with specific uh, kitchen equipment. And you also, you get the recipe and you also get the recommendations for the um, actual, um, you know, uh, item. How do you even, that's another thing I wanted to ask, you know, moderation, right? It's, it's live streaming, right? So you might have sometimes hateful comments or, you know, nasty comments, whatever. Um, how does it work? Like the person that is there, 
can can he moderate like before it goes live or once it goes live so you can delete things? I'm I'm very curious about that because every app is so fast. So how do you how do you manage moderation? Yeah, so what's good about our technology, if you'd compare it, let's say, to Instagram Live or TikTok Live, etc. So um, we make sure uh, that the session is clean and uh, highly moderated. And the way we do it, we use AI in the chat. So we automatically block negative messages or even competitors' names. Um, and then uh, it won't appear on the chat at all. So... We have this automatic AI moderation. In addition, if you want, you could manual um, do an addition, additional moderation if you want. You have this option as well. Something else I wanted to ask, and it's like, you know, one of the, my, my last, you know, main question, and then of course, you know, please add anything on top of that. Uh, of course, all the time, you know, I have to do this comparison between US slash rest of the world and China when it comes to like shopping, right? Because we are law, right? Uh, you know, from the king of lipstick to like many other people that are selling millions and millions in a few hours, uh, of course, uh, different population in terms of like size, uh, different uh, behaviors and so on. Uh, but in the US, uh, rest of the world, uh, Europe as well, it's, you know, it's taking, it starts to scale up, but it's, it's a bit slower than expected, right? Like, you know, before it was like, oh, two years ago, it was like, this is the year of social commerce that we thought it was last year. So it's, it's getting there, right? But a bit slower. Why do you think the US, uh, Europe, other countries uh, are still not adapting uh, compared to maybe, again, what is happening in China? Yeah, I would say it, um, it's a cultural uh, thing. And I think that it would be different than, uh, compared to what we're seeing in China. So, um, for instance, in China, you have this live shopping event the entire day, right? It's like 24-7, they have it. Yeah. And what we see at BioWave is actually that in the U.S., we have um, preferred hours at the in the day that you should do the live shopping event when people are more available for it. So I would, I would say it's a cultural thing. And my expectation is that it won't be the same like in China, but as a, a brand or a retailer or an influencer that is doing live commerce in the States, you need to do some adjustments to uh, your audience. And this is what we do. We help our clients build the right strategy of how to do live commerce in the Western world. And it's different. And you need to, to apply these um, adjustments. You said about, you know, best hours during the day and best day. Can you share some, some info for that? Like, have you identified some that works very well? Um, is it like in the evening uh, when people come back to work? Like, whoa, 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 what is that? Yeah, so most of our sessions are in the evening and uh, also not during weekend, for instance. So um, this is the best practice that we see. Also, if the, if the session is um, being promoted on the social media of the influencer, so we recommend to do it uh, towards the end of the week so the creator would have time for to promote the live event. In terms of, uh, you know, see what we're saying about, you know, cultural differences, right? Uh, are there any other challenges and, and opportunities for, let's let's talk about the U.S. market for a second, right? There is a big one. Uh, so again, we was like, you know, the different in culture, they have to do things differently, but uh, are there any other challenges that uh, could be, tech, technically speaking, could be about, you know, behaviors of users online and, and so on, and then also opportunities. Uh, yeah, so in terms of opportunities, I would say that um, what I mentioned before about using the session as the content that could monetize after the session ends. So to understand that it's not just a live event and that's it. It's a live event that after you could use to to keep, you know, monetize and leverage this content and repurpose uh, this content. I think it's a huge opportunity. And understand that live shopping is not the one-off. It's a strategy. It's a marketing channel. It's something that could bring uh, your brand many different values. And uh, more than just the, the dollar that you're selling, but also traffic that you're getting, user acquisition, brand awareness, uh, content, as I said before, there are many, many values uh, around it. Um, and then in terms of uh, challenges, so I think that... Um, um, I would say that 
if you are a brand that is going to, to start doing live shopping, you need to understand that there is an optimization process that you need to take into consideration. So probably your first session won't be huge, okay? You need to understand that there is an optimization uh, process like in every um, other marketing uh, channel you you start. It makes sense, you know. It's I think it's uh, you need resilience uh, as in everything, right? You start like it's like you know people on Twitch, right? You might start with like two people watching and then five and then ten, just as to continue doing that, right? And uh, without getting like, oh my god, it's not working. There are no people. You, you need to b- build a community, right? You need to build. Exactly, you build a community of live shoppers for your brand. Exactly. That's yeah. Very curious to see what is going to happen in the future. I really love the topic, so. I will uh, constantly follow, right? What is, uh, well, what are the next steps uh, on on that? Um, Adi, thank you so much for uh, joining me today, for sharing uh, all your knowledge about this topic with us. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. This was the Influence Factor by the Influencer Marketing Factory, and I'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.